Good afternoon, Shuri. Uh, first of all, let me take this opportunity to congratulate you on your appointment as uh, chairman of, of Study Group 2. Thank you very much. Study Group 2 is uh, best known for, for numbering, um, and which has become a, a critical resource for international dialing. It's also becoming more important for businesses around the world. I was wondering if you could give us uh, a, an update on, on, on the numbering activity of Study Group 2 and how that fits in today's, uh, into today's uh, um, telecoms environment, but also the wider business environment. Yes, Study Group 2 is uh, highly involved in the numbering in addressing and identification resources. Uh, study Group 2 uh, takes consideration of the assignment of uh, reclamation, reservation of uh, number resources. That's very important for the running of the telecom uh, communication. Uh, to communicate, you must have a country code so that you can reach other countries and communicate uh, to other users all over the world. Uh, also, uh, new services are introduced uh, recently, and uh, this requires new number of resources and uh, this can give innovation to new services. In the, the, the last uh, uh, study group period, I know that there were some new numbering assignments, um, a, in, indeed one for uh, one new country. Um, could, could you give us, uh, could you tell us about that? Yes, there was a, really there was a numbering assignment for the United Nations, uh, USO, which is the Office for Commission for Humanitarian, Humanitarian Affairs. Uh, and this allows the United Nations uh, agencies in the, this field to operate all over the world, try to come into the country and uh, take part of uh, the numbering resources under the 888 number and can communicate to the head offices and uh, do their duty in the humanitarian activities. So this will be very flexible and allow you and to take immediate actions in case of disaster or in case of uh, such uh, situations. Now it's clearly very important to this aspect of emergency telecommunications and it highlights that as study group two is not just uh, allocating the numbers like 3-3 three, three for France and 4-1 mm -hmm. for Switzerland, uh, but also in a wider humanitarian sense, it's, it's clearly very important. Mm -hmm. And also now I understand that uh, these, country, these, these codes can be allocated to, 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 to businesses as, as well. Is that something that's happened in the last study period or something that you expect to be happening more in the, in the coming study period? You know, I think the terms for it, that we are, discuss, are discussing uh, application from several uh, business entities requesting international codes one of the most uh, interesting applications is uh, a worldwide educational uh, network where they request uh, uh, numbering codes, country, what you call country code, but this international mm -hmm. number that can be used, used all over the world and allow researchers and students to join to uh, universities and make collaborative work in the uh, educational area and uh, in resource area. This, I think, is a very interesting application we are looking at currently. Yes, mu much more than just just country code. Is, yes. it, is it a very complicated process to 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 have uh, uh, an international number like this uh, approved, or is it quite uh, straightforward? Could you say a little bit about that? Uh, indeed, under Study Group 2, there is what is called a number coordination team, which is formed of the leaders of the Study Group 2, and the study application for numbering resources. And they are granted according to very, very, very well defined rules based on IQ recommendations. We usually ask the, apl the applicators to come to the IQ and discuss their requests and see how uh, far they are eligible to get these numbers. We have them as we meet in consultation. And accordingly, they are granted uh, these numbers. And uh, I think just yesterday, this helped, not yesterday, just two days ago. We had a meeting with one of the applicants and he explained his case and submitted such explanations and most likely he'll get the code very recently to run his business. It's relatively straightforward uh, for something yeah. that seems quite complicated. That's, that's very good news, I'm sure, for, for business. Um, one thing I know that was a big topic uh, in Dubai 
uh, last year was the misuse of, of, of numbering. Uh, and I know that this is a very big issue for some developing countries. So I was wondering if you could say a little bit about Study Group 2's role in that area. The misuse issue has a long history in the Study Group 2. It was discussed several years ago because of some reported cases. And uh, we had the recommendation, uh, one E156, which deals with uh, procedures to report on misuse issues. And for several years, only 15 cases was reported to the ICU. Only last year, GZSME has brought to the attention of study group two more than 104 cases in one month only. So this was like a storming uh, issue regarding uh, highlighting the misuse issue. We all know that there is the misuse running everywhere, but reporting was not as such. So, uh, uh, thanks to the SME that we brought to these cases, which make alertness about the importance of this issue. And accordingly, there was some work in the regions uh, who submitted their contributions to the WCA and to uh, WWICET uh, conferences. And uh, accordingly, there were resolutions and there were uh, articles in the ITUR treaty uh, addressing this issue. So the, this uh, issue has been revived once more in a larger scale, and the old world now is aware of the issue of the misuse and its importance. Simply misuse uh, is about uh, like hijacking the numbers from one country to the other, so the revenues come to one country is, uh, and not going to the country mm -hmm. that is, uh, has this number in resources. Also, also it's like uh, there is a gray market in uh, this area, where the cash flow runs not in the proper way. This usually is associated also with uh, non-delivery of calling much number. As one would like to know who is calling yes, in. Yes, yes. Even uh, uh, if you are roaming, you want to say to answer, not answer, uh, depending on the importance of the call. If you don't have the number, uh, you, uh, you cannot answer. But uh, this uh, personally impacts. But on the business impact, if the number is spoofed or not delivered, the accounting rate is uh, sometimes are subject to fraud. So this way now will come into the surface and will be a study item for study group two in collaboration with IQP study group three, who is concerned mm -hmm. with uh, financial issue and economic economical impact. It, it, it's clear that this was a, an issue for developing countries in, in particular, and I know that Study Group 2 is making some great mm -hmm. effort to in, involve more developing countries in its work. Perhaps you could uh, give us a, an idea of, of, of how um, you expect it to go about doing that. Yes, because uh, by making some statistics and observation, we see that most of the numbers uh, misused are uh, belonging to the de developing countries. So this gives like an uh, antenna <laughs> uh, how things are running. Uh, so uh, developed countries have to be aware now and uh, we are trying to characterize how such misuse issues are, uh, are coming. And uh, fortunately we have now uh, created for study group two, three regional groups for study group two in three regions. One is Arab region, this was the first, the second in Africa. And the third just recently established after WPCA in the Americas. Uh, these uh, regional groups try to invite uh, more developed countries to participate in the IQ work, what you call it, to climb the standardization ladder, mm. uh, and to collaborate in the work and provide what you call it, uh, consolidated uh, contributions from these regions. Mm. This helps them get involved and resolve their particular interests. Well, that's running uh, right now in study group two and other study groups we looked as well. well that, that's excellent news. I, I, I know that there are, uh, are many issues that study group two covers, but I'll, I'll just pick up on, on two before we wrap up. W one is that I know that study group two is looking at human factors and accessibility. And the other one uh, that I think is, is, is perhaps worth mentioning, you, you touched on it with emergency telecoms. But there is some other work around emergency telecoms with the allocation of a uh, uh, a code that you can include within your mobile phone to indicate to the emergency services uh, mm -hmm. the number that they would wish uh, to be called in the event of an emergency. So perhaps you could tell us uh, if there is any more work or 
uh, and what, what else is going on in, in that direction? Yeah, one of the many areas I see uh, Saudi Group 2 is working uh, in, for example, uh, example I have said about the emergency numbers, that uh, somebody has some uh, uh, something went wrong with him, medical uh, or accident or so, and uh, somebody finds the mobile with him, but not uh, to whom he can talk. If you can uh, look at the directory and find the first number, like uh, a merge number to whom you can call. If you just press it, you call his wife, call his doctor, or so. Uh, this should be standardized, or maybe should be included in the set as a special button or a special entry so that the direct uh, person on it will address the uh, right person, like the wife, the son, the doctor, or uh, emergency service. This, uh, uh, it's a recommendation which is underdeveloped right now. Uh, also, we have uh, to mention in study group two, we have another part dealing with network management. It's very uh, important uh, activity that I see the study group two is working in. How the telecom network are managed? Uh, is there is a failure in network health can be recovered? The resilience and robustness of networks and security of the management system is very important issue that we have worked in study two dealing with. And working party two is associated with what is known as SNOW, Service and Network Operations Group. Mm -hmm. These are the, these are the group of manufacturers, very big manufacturers uh, from all over the world, uh, concerned with network management. And we report to working party two as the exchange information uh, and uh, put some guidelines for network management so that the also that the network management systems all over the world can communicate and can take care of uh, network resilience to support uh, the users. Users can uh, not see that. Users have to on set. But when they see them, there is much work uh, running to, uh, to be sure of the robustness of networks and continuity of operation. Yes, and uh, again, this is a, a very important issue. Those requirements to be captured and to be fed to the software developers that are making these, these, uh, this, this yes, software, yes, this yes, network yes. management software. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Well, um, I think that uh, about wraps it up for me, uh, Sharif. I, I don't know if there's any more that you want to tell us uh, about study group two, but I think we, we, we've done quite a good job of covering uh, mm -hmm. a wide, uh, a wide, it's wide remit. Is there, is there anything we missed, do you think? Uh, you just mentioned it slightly, but it is very important. Accessibility. About human factor and yeah. <laughs> yeah, That's right. Uh, human factor is concerned of how people access the set, uh, how we can access telecommunications. If we have a set which has uh, different signs between manufacturers, if uh, the letters are not very clear, the functions are not clear, even for the proper person who cannot even make communication easily. I remember sometimes we travel in some, in some countries, just mentioning names, and try to make telephone calls from uh, uh, a payphone set. Mm -hmm. You cannot even know what uh, written if it's different language. Yeah, yeah. But if you like in the, in the fight of standard science, then you can blindly know how to dial your country. Uh, I think most of us maybe have faced some situation. But uh, more importantly, is uh, the people of special needs uh, and disabilities and uh, elderly. We need special care, how it can communicate. Uh, telecom devices must have some uh, sort or maybe special devices be manufactured have such people who uh, need that. There are not a uh, few. There are some hundred million people uh, having such. Uh, yes. Maybe it's, uh, and as we maybe all live longer, as we all live longer. Family and other families. So, so and uh, for the elderly, everyone, uh, hopefully, yeah. maybe life for everybody. Uh, so we must have some sort of care uh, to be taken care of that we can make communication easily. Yes. Uh, and even. Uh, if he is in distress, must have some sort of clear mm -hmm. and have to call his doctor or uh, to speak to anybody. It's like we have talked in Vietnam about the sets having some entry for uh, emergency situations. So I think it's very important. Uh, and and uh, this has been defined uh, very clearly in the WCIT, the World mm -hmm. Conference of International Telecommunications and put as a new article in the, ITU, in the ITR treaty. That's right. Which uh, obligatory to all member states to sign it. Mm. So this signifies the importance and the uh, interest of ITU to take care of the disabled people and uh, people with special needs and yeah. 
Yeah, and it's not just people that we're traditionally thinking of as disabled, but we all become, as we become older, the population becomes mm -hmm. older, our eyesight becomes worse, and our hearing mm -hmm. becomes worse. Uh, maybe I'm just speaking for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to myself also. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, and again, congratulations thank on you your much. appointment. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for the work for ICU and for the whole community of the world. Thank you. Thank you very much.